Hey everyone, my name is Gigi. Today I'll be going over iron deficiency anemia. For all of you who are watching, I put together three videos about iron deficiency anemia that I hope you find helpful when studying for your NCLEX RN exam. This is video one of three that will detail everything that you need to know. Since, after all, iron deficiency is the most common nutritional deficiency in the United States and the most common cause of anemia. In this video, I will be discussing the clinical aspects of the disease. What is iron deficiency? What are the signs and symptoms? What tests do we use to diagnose iron deficiency anemia? And how can we prevent it? Now, before we actually dive into the specifics as to how iron deficiency causes anemia, let's take a step back and discuss what anemia is in general. Anemia is a condition. It's not a specific disease. It's like saying, I have a fever. Anemia is defined as a decreased amount of circulating red blood cells. Now, that's a big deal because red blood cells make up the most of our cells in our body. Men have about 5.2 million cells, and women, we have about 4.7. To understand a little more about how iron deficiency anemia presents clinically, let me talk, let me talk a little bit about what exactly the red blood cell does. Here's the blood vessel. Let me draw a couple of red blood cells. The red blood cell is constantly circulating throughout our body. And when it gets to the lungs, it picks up oxygen. Then, from the lungs, it will continue circulating and it will take that oxygen it picked up to our tissues. That oxygen is needed to nourish our tissues and sustain life. There's a specific molecule inside the red blood cell that allows it to perform this task. This molecule is called hemoglobin. This is the star of the show. It's this molecule that allows the red blood cell to trap the oxygen within the cell and transport it to the tissues it needs to get to. So where's the connection between iron and red blood cells? Let me show you. Let's clear the screen and review what we have discussed so far. So we talked about the red blood cell. This is the root of the problem in iron deficiency anemia. There's a low amount of red blood cells. And inside the red blood cell, we have hemoglobin. And it is this molecule that allows the red blood cell to pick up the oxygen from the lungs. The way that hemoglobin can bind the oxygen is with iron. It's this iron that facilitates the binding. In fact, 60% of the iron that we have in our body is in hemoglobin. So you can see that if you have a significant decrease in iron, you will have a significant decrease in hemoglobin production, which in turn will affect your red blood cell production. So essentially, a decrease in iron stores will clinically lead to an anemia and red blood cells will be less efficient in transporting oxygen to our tissues. Now that we have that information, we can now discuss the signs and symptoms we see in our patients with iron deficiency anemia. Let's discuss a likely scenario. The groups most at risk for iron deficiency anemia are one, young children and pregnant women. And this is due to rapid growth that's going on at that time and higher iron demands. Two, are adolescent girls and women of childbearing age. And this is due to menstrual cycles and loss of blood. And because we are in the United States and with its diverse population in the country, I do wanna mention that studies have also found that Hispanic Americans, in particular children and women, also have an increased prevalence of iron deficiency. So if we were to discuss a likely scenario, let's say you had a patient, Ms. Garcia, a 24-year-old woman who presents to you with feeling tired all the time. The nursing assessment in this scenario will be very important in identifying the signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia, especially the ones that the patient may not even notice. Now, I'm definitely not the best drawer, but I am a visual person, so let me draw Ms. Garcia in my best stick figure possible, and discuss the signs and symptoms that may present in a person with iron deficiency anemia. I like to go from head to toe. Some of the general signs we may notice just by looking at her may be pale skin. If the anemia is very severe, we may see blue sclera, which is when the white of her eyes have a little blue tinge because of the lack of red blood cells and that rich red pigment that is provided by the iron and the hemoglobin. Spooning of her fingernails, which are flattened, brittled nails. Some patients present with a sore tongue. We call that glossitis. 
Some symptoms that we see due to lack of oxygen to her brain are dizziness, headache, lightheadedness. Some cardiovascular symptoms may be increased heart rate or low blood pressure, hypotension. She may be short of breath, in particular on exertion. In this case, she may just say she has had changes in her ability to perform her activities of daily life. Some specific symptoms of conditions that may be causing the iron deficiency are blood in the stool, which would make her stool dark and tar colored. So you definitely wanna ask her about that. But the patient may not even realize she has blood in her stool. So it's also important not only to ask, but to also check her stool for hidden blood. She may also have pain in her belly if the iron deficiency is caused by a stomach or intestinal problem. A symptom you definitely wanna ask women about is their menstrual cycle. And if they have heavy menstrual bleeding, this may be the cause of her iron deficiency. And lastly, I want to mention a symptom that commonly presents in iron deficiency anemia. It's called pica. This is a condition when people eat non-food material. Commonly, patients will like to chew on ice, for example. Some of my professors have mentioned, though, they've seen patients chew on dirt or paper. Now that we've covered the signs and symptoms we would get from the patient's presentation and history, let's discuss some of the laboratory tests we would do to help us diagnose this disease. There's no single test that identifies iron deficiency anemia. It's a combination of tests that determine iron status and presence of anemia that help steer us in that direction. The most common tests we do measure are hemoglobin and hematocrit. Hemoglobin is the concentration of hemoglobin in whole blood. And hematocrit is the fractional volume of whole blood that red blood cells occupy. These tests help determine the severity of the anemia. For example, if these values are extremely lower than normal, then that would indicate that the iron deficiency has been developing over a longer period of time. Red blood cell indices are also important. For example, mean corpuscular volume. This test indicates the average size of the red blood cells in our in the patient's blood. In iron deficiency, the MCV, the mean corpuscular volume, is smaller than normal because you do not have enough of the starting material you need to make red blood cells. We call this microcytic. Other tests we would also do in order to determine iron status are serum iron, to test how much iron is in the blood, total iron binding capacity, this measures transferrin molecules in the blood, this is the protein that transports iron in the blood. With iron deficiency, total iron, bind, total iron binding capacity increases as iron stores become more depleted. Another way to measure this is percent saturation of transferrin. Normally percent saturation is 33%. With iron deficiency anemia, we will see a percent saturation decrease because like I mentioned, there's less iron occupying the seats. As you can see, iron deficiency anemia has many severe consequences on the body's functions and presents with many symptoms. However, there are many key measures we can take as clinicians to help prevent this disease in our patients. One way is diet. Eating foods rich in iron. Examples are meat, fish, poultry. In addition to increasing our iron take through our diet, we should also increase our vitamin C intake because that aids in iron absorption in our gut. Examples of foods rich in vitamin C are oranges, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. An important measure to prevent iron deficiency anemia is screening of at-risk groups. One thing I want to stress is iron deficiency does not equal anemia. Early stages of iron deficiency typically don't present with any signs or symptoms until they present as iron deficiency anemia. We can prevent the onset of this disease by catching the iron deficiency early enough. For pregnant women, the CDC has recommended a low-dose iron supplement to meet additional needs and prevent the onset of iron deficiency anemia. And lastly, one important way to prevent this is educating our patients. We should let, let our patients know the importance of iron intake for our bodies, and you can also provide suggestions for specific foods to eat that are fortified with iron. This concludes this video. Thank you very much for listening. If you want to learn more about iron metabolism and how exactly our bodies get to an iron deficiency state and their causes, Check out my next video on the pathophysiology of iron deficiency anemia. Thank you.